नमस्कार वेलकम टू मैथ फर्स्ट मैथ फर्स्ट मीन मैथमेटिक्स एंड यूनिवर्स टूगेदर मैथ फर्स्ट नाउ इन द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सीरीज आई एम गोइंग टू सॉल्व जेई एडवांस 2019 पेपर टू बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वॉन्ट टू से फ्यू वर्ड्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्यू व्यूअर्स ऑफ माइंड has said that uh, it will be better if i discuss the theory first and then problems okay i shall prepare theory related videos later but for now due to several reasons i can't upload them right now uh, you guys can do one thing you go through books i have said the names of books if even if i haven't then i am saying it right now one book is rd sharma's book rd sharma's first 12 i think 12 or 11 i think 12 R. D. Sharma's book and S. N. D. Sorendra Nathde. Those who are in West Bengal board, they should prefer this one. And there is one more book also, Sain Chattopadhyay. Ah, uh, you guys can go through any of them. Or there is one R. S. Agarwal also. And there are so many other books for specifically for uh, you know for I. I. T. S. or J. E. Main. Uh, like uh, Arihant's book, Arihant's, uh, then um, Dinesh, and M T G. These books are quite famous of them. You can go through any book for the theory part. Okay. So what I shall do? I shall explain all the theory that is required while solving the problems. Okay. Without theory, problem can't be done. First of all, and second thing is that. Uh, in class 11 to 11 mathematics, and especially in this uh, entrance examinations, there you guys don't need that much hardcore theory which is needed in BSc or MSc level. You guys need to apply the theories to solve questions, especially MCQ questions. Okay, then I don't. I think that the approach which takes the path of getting a question, solving it, and where you get stuck, then you find. Try to find out what the theory actually is. But at first, read the basics of the chapter from the book. Read line by line, and then watch my videos, problem solving videos. There you will see how the theory actually works. But before that, you guys go through the theory by yourself. Try to make a clear concept of the entire chapter in your mind, and then come to watch my video. It will be most beneficial then. Okay. Now let's start with the problem. You can see the problem here, and in the problem, we see there are six matrices are given. Okay, and out of those six, out of these six matrices, you see the first one is actually identity matrix. Then let's work out with this. Here is given another matrix X, and X is equal to summation of k equal to one to six, p k, and one matrix. Two one three, one zero two, three two one, P K, whole transpose. Okay. Now those who are not that much familiar with this summation cons uh, convention here, uh, I should not say summation convention. Summation sign here and the use of it. What does it mean for them? I am explaining this one. Okay. See, this one means P one. This matrix. Let me denote this matrix as M. Okay, I am writing this M. M P one transpose plus P two M P two transpose plus dot 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 plus P six M P six transpose. Okay, this is actually what this means. See, the main structure or the main skeleton is same. Soul of the expression is same, but what is changing this number? Actually, this index. This P K is changing actually. So this is what this means. Now, in the problem, it is said that to check first one this relation. They are saying if X, this means this entire matrix X into this one matrix, this matrix, if this one is alpha into this, then they are saying that alpha will be equal to thirty. Okay. Don't be confused here with one thing that X one on one. Alpha one on one. Then these two matrices will get cancelled out, and alpha will be equal to x. No, 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 no. Alpha is actually a scalar or a real number, and x is what a matrix. So they cannot ever be same. Okay. 
So before checking this option, see the second option saying we have to check whether x is symmetric or not. Now, as I said before, I shall explain the theories while solving the problem. Those who doesn't know what actually symmetric matrix is, for them, see, a matrix A will be called symmetric if A transpose is equal to A. That is, then it will be called symmetric. And A transpose is equal to minus A, it will be called anti-symmetric or anti-symmetric. Whatever you want to pronounce. Okay. So, this is true. And uh, what is transpose? Transpose is actually changing the rows into columns and columns into rows. Okay. Like, uh, let me take, let me take this matrix one. Okay. No, I should not take this one. I shall do it later. Let me still take some matrix, 2 cross 2 matrix, 2, 1, 5, 7. If I take transpose of it, it will become 2, 5. Take 2, 5 from here and rotate it in this way. It will become 2, 5. 1, rotate it. Nonsense. This will be the transpose. That is actually what I like to say. If this is my row, this is my column. I mean, this is my column, this is my row. Then if I take transpose now, it will become This will become. This is actually for understanding, obviously. Okay. So here in this question, I have to check whether S transpose is equal to X. And if X transpose, we can prove somehow that X transpose is again is equal to this X only, then it will be proved that X is actually symmetric. To prove that, let me take the transpose here. X transpose. Now See, here are some terms, actually there are six terms here, six terms are here. So, and they are getting multiplied, each, each term is a product of some matrices. So, what will happen if I take transpose? First of all, let me break this one. This is P1, N, P2 transpose, P1 transpose plus P2, N, P2 transpose plus dot 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 plus P6 and P6 transpose. Okay. I am writing three properties of transpose here. You guys watch this carefully and note down. Property number one, two, three. Okay. Property number one says that A B transpose is equal to B transpose. A transpose. This one is the first one. Second one is A plus B whole transpose is A transpose plus B transpose. Third one is A transpose transpose. I mean transpose of A transpose is again equal to A. Now, what this relation mean? First of all, see what happens here. If I take transpose of a product of a matrix, then that Second one, position is second one will come at the first place with its own transpose, and the first one will come to second position with its own transpose. Okay, this one is quite simple. Like if I take sum and then take the transpose, is equal to taking the sum of the transpose. See, carefully listen whatever I say because every word I say here now while explaining this is very important, and the third one. Obviously, it is clear. Like I have made my column row and row into column, and in a second step, by taking the second transpose, I am making my row into column, column into row. So, what the way this was my row, this was my column. I took it here, and I took it here. In the second step, I again dipping it here and taking this one there. So actually, what actually it means that whatever I did, I am undoing that actually with the second transpose. So this was, this were the main theory of transpose. Now, let's come to this problem. Keep these rules in mind or you can say formally. Here, I am taking x transpose. Taking x transpose, I can do it in same line. x transpose is actually taking transpose, whole transpose. And what we did we see here? 
a plus b whole transpose equal to a transpose plus b transpose and if it is true for two terms then it will be true for any number of terms so what it will become actually each of them will get its own transpose okay it is done now next what did we learn that if a and b are two matrices and a b transpose is equal to b transpose a transpose right see what will happen here I can think it in one way that if a b transpose is this one then if I take a b c three matrices now nah, it will become c transpose b transpose a transpose okay with that let me check here it will be p1 transpose whole transpose m transpose p1 transpose similarly the others using the summation convention I can write here as summation of k equal to 1 to 6 then p1 transpose transpose m transpose p1 transpose okay oh i should not write p i one i should write k okay since it is true for all the terms then we can take in one transpose we are meant to squeeze the entire place okay so this will become pk only now see our original matrix, it is PK, then the matrix M, then PK transpose. So PK and PK transpose is okay. M transpose, that is what we are thinking about here. See what happens. Our M is 2, 1, 3, 1, 0, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1. If I take the transpose, it will become 2, 1, 3, 1, 0, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3. 213 will become 213, 102, 102, 321, 3, Is there any difference between these two matrices? No. Actually, this is a symmetric matrix. How to check whether a matrix is symmetric or not without taking transpose? Watch here. Take the principal diagonal. Then find the equidistant elements. If the equidistant elements or the entries from the principal diagonal are same, then the matrix is a symmetric matrix. Now, if these numbers, I mean these entries, the equidistant entries from the principal diagonal were of different sign but of same modulus value. Modulus value means what? The like value of 5 is 5 value of modulus value of minus 5 is again 5 okay so minus 5 and 5 is differ by a simple sign minus sign okay so that is what i was meaning okay then mt is actually m transpose is actually m this is actually x so x transpose is equal to x therefore it is true that is x is symmetric now the option b is correct let us find out the option number C. What does it say? It says that the sum of diagonal entries of X is 18. What is the sum of diagonal entries? It is known as trace. And we write it in a small, in short and write any of them. Actually. Okay. So, like in this matrix, this is M actually, I have written it M. So trace of M, what will be equal to? 2 plus 0 plus 1. Elements of the principal diagonal. And this is equal to 3. 2 plus 0 plus 1 equal to 3. Okay. Then I have to find the trace of this X. Now, before going to that, let me explain what is trace. Trace, I mean, sorry, I have explained what is trace. I have to explain the properties of trace. First property trace of AB that is equal to trace of BA. First one trace of ABC. Be careful, watch this ABC. Okay. Trace of ABC, 
A, B, C. Start from B. B, C, A. Trace of B, C, A. Again, start from C. C, A, B. Trace of C, A, B. Okay? But it will not be equal to trace of A, C, B. A, C, B. It will not be equal to trace of A, C, B. Because, see what's happening here. You are violating the cycle. This cycle should be maintained. You can start from C, then take A, and then take B. All you can start from B. But the cycle should be in this way, clockwise direction actually. Okay? These two properties are actually this one here is going to be used. Oh, one more. Which is the simplest one? Trace of A plus B is equal to trace of A plus trace of B. See how this formula will be used here. All of them are in sum, they are in summation. So I can use this one while finding the entire trace. This will work. And after that, when I shall come to the trace of a particular matrix, I mean particular PKM, PKT in this portion, which when I will come, then I will be I shall be able to use this this formula. Okay. Using that, I shall try to find out uh, something which will be helpful for me to find out the final trace. Let's do it. Okay. I'm taking trace of x now when i am taking trace of uh, trace of x this one will become trace of p1 m p1 transpose plus trace of p2 m p2 transpose therefore i can write it uh, i can i should write once trace of trace of p1 m p1 transpose plus trace of p2 m P2 transpose in this way, it will run up to 6. I mean, the index 6 it will run up to. Then we can simply write it as summation of k equal to 1 to 6, it will be k and it's done. Okay. Now, now here, consider this as A, this as B, this as C. So what is our cycle? A, B, C, A. I can take this one. This is A, B, C in the form of A, B, C. So I can change it in this way. Let me take C at the first one. Plus P, K transpose, then P, K, then N. C, A, B, C, A, B. Clear? Now, Take any PK from the given matrices. Uh, I'm taking here. Let me take P4. I'm taking P4 and explaining what I want to make the point. See, P4 is this one 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay? And if I take P, if I take P4 transpose, it will become 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, okay? Now, here is PK transpose into PK. Let me multiply it here. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. I don't even have to calculate this one. I know the answer will be. Not because I have done it before. Because this only this type of things happen. Then how does it happen? Let me show you. Let me explain. Uh, see it intuitively, okay? Here, observe one thing. Take P4 only. Okay, if I explain for P4, you guys will be able to understand for all other PKs. Okay. See, this matrix, each row contains, or each column you can say, contains single one. Okay? And all other elements are zero. Okay. So if I multiply this thing with some other matrix, which also have, which also has actually same, I mean, in a column, there is only one one or rest are zero. Then 
it will give only identity matrix and especially it is working with its transpose here transpose will what will you see here i have one at third position in the row after transpose taking the transpose one will come at the third position in the column then this one will get multiplied with this so for the first row my one one position in the product it will give only one the rest of them are will be zero this is the main reason behind it and that's why if you guys get confused about it you guys check all other all other matrices and you will find it okay now let me wipe this out now clearly from this expression k equal to one to six transpose up this one will be identity matrix identity matrix if i multiply the identity matrix with m it will remain only m and what is the trace of m three and how many times it will be added three plus three plus dot 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 plus three it is actually six times so it is six into three equal to 18 hence option number three is also correct Now, let's uh, at the last one. Uh, last one is quite tricky. I have to work with it. See, they are saying that x minus ti, whether it is invertible matrix or not. Okay, but before going to that, let me come to the first option. I left first option because second one was quite easier to prove. Okay, the first option is saying that x into this matrix is equal to alpha into this matrix then alpha will be 30 it is there is what we have to prove so i am assuming or i am taking a as 1 on 1 okay or 1 on 1 as a now x a i am calculating x a let's see what will be x a p1 n p1 transpose plus P2 and P2 transpose dot 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 P6 and P6 transpose whole multiplied by A. Okay. Now, since it is multiplied, it will get multiplied with all of them, all of this. Okay. Okay. Observe one thing carefully. I'm again taking last time I took P4. Now I'm taking P5. See if I can find out this term, okay, or if I calculate this term, half of my work will be done. Now one thing is there: matrix multiplication is associative. That's why if I calculate this one first and then I move to the other part, then it will not change my result. Okay, so x is that x is the x is what that is given there now p5 let me work with p5 p5 is 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 okay if i take transpose of it p, if i take the transpose of p5 then it will be 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 okay let's multiply with 1 1 1 i don't have to see anything this one will come Right, so this thing has only one column. I'm sorry, have one column, three rows. That is, this is three cross three matrix. This is three cross one matrix. So final, the product matrix will be actually three cross one matrix. It is certain. Now, what is the first row? It is zero one zero. So according to the rule of matrix multiplication, this this so zero zero one one zero zero. Here will come one. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Actually, again, the same logic as I used before also. Each row contains single 1. All are 0. That's why when they will get multiplied here, they will give us only the same matrix here. Okay. Then, and this is true for all other PKs. You guys can check, but that is needless. So, it will finally become A only. 
So P1 MA, P2 MA plus dot 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 P6 MA. Okay. Since MA is common in all of them, I can take them common. Okay. Now let's find this sum P1 up to P6. And if you observe carefully, this one will be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay. And we have to calculate MA. MA is one thing we have to calculate here. Actually, I hate this type of multiplication and calculation, but we have to do at least this thing. It is 2, 1, 3, 1, 0, 2, 3, 2, 1. And I have to multiply 1, 1, 1 with it. So it will be, watch also one thing here. It is 1, 1, 1. So the entries of the matrices will be nothing but the sum of the entries and the row. And it will be first one, 2 plus 1 plus 3, 6. If you guys are getting any doubt, you can check by the conventional multiplication. 3, 6. See, 2, 1, 3. 2 plus 1 plus 3, 6. 1 into 1, 1. 0 into 1, 0. 2 into 1, 2. So 1 plus 2, 3. The same. So it is becoming 6, 3, 6. Okay? Aha. Uh -huh. A very big calculation now I have to do. But not that true. Not a very big calculation actually here. See, it is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, all the way to. So I can make it, after this I am coming here, I can make it as 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, with 1, 2 taking outside. And from it I can take 3 outside, 3, 2, 1, 3. Okay? Now, uh, so 2 and 3 will become 6. Will remain the we have to find out then the multiplication of these two matrices. Okay. Using the previous rule actually. Multiply this one with two. I mean actually this is the main process. Two into one into one this and three into one this. Okay. So it will be two into two, one, one. So two in two plus one three and then three plus three into one here three. Okay, wait a moment. This one will be two. Because it, it was 3 here, no, 6 here. So I take 3 common, so it will be 2. 2 into 1, 2. 1 into 1, 1. 2 into 1, 2. So total, 5. Second row will be, see, if the first row having entries 1, 1, 1 gives us 5, all other will be 5. Because all other rows are same. So finally it is becoming 6 into 5 into 1, 1, 1. That is 30 into A. That is what required. Therefore, the first option is also correct. That is, uh, I mean, this alpha is equal to 30. Okay? I hope it is clear. Next, let us check the last one. What we have got from here? We started calculating xA. xA and we got that xA is equal to 30 to A, where alpha is equal to 30. If I take this one in this side, it will become x minus 30 identity matrix. It will never write it in this way, like x minus 30 into a. Never write in this way. No, no, no. 30 doesn't make any sense. There is a number. We have to multiply one matrix here. Okay. Now, let's ask him whether this matrix or uh, yeah, this matrix is invertible or not. Or in other words, if the determinant of this matrix, I mean determinant of x minus 30i, if it is non-zero, then it will be known as invertible. Because invertible means the matrix which possesses its inverse. So, and we know A inverse is equal to 1 by determinant of A into adjoint of A. So this determinant of A, if it is equal to 0, then inverse doesn't exist. Okay. Then, let us find out this one. You all know about grammar rule. Okay. Well, just a moment, before coming to this one, let me consider one equation. And that equation is, let us take one matrix as B. B into X is equal to 0. 
zero means what? The zero matrix actually. Then, well, B is some, let us assume three cross three matrix. There are some elements here. And this X is X1, X2, X3. I mean, three different components are But these are unknown. Now, we can use Scrammer's rule here. How? Because if I multiply these two, this is 3 cross 3, this is 3 cross 1. So finally, there will remain 3 cross 1 matrix, the product matrix that will come in. And this 3 cross 1 matrix will give us this thing. Some quantity here, some quantity here, some quantity here. And all of these quantities will contain some constant x1 plus some constant x2 since minus x1, x is x1, x2, x3. Okay, after multiplication with the elements of b, it will get some constant x1, some constant x2 in this way. Comparing each row, we shall get three equations and then we can apply what? Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule says that if the determinant of the coefficient matrix, what is coefficient matrix? Let me explain this in two variables, okay? Like, see, A11, X1 plus A12, X2. Those who were asking about the theories, I'm telling you, you guys, I'm explaining the process of Kramer's rule. How to find solution using Kramer's rule, I'm explain, explain, I mean, explaining here. Okay? These two are my equations. But see, I am writing it in this way: one one, a one two, a two one, a two two, and here x one, x two, and then c one, c two. How this is equal to this? I mean, these two are equivalent. Multiply here. When I should multiply a one one x one plus a one two x two, I shall get this one: a two one x one, a two two x two. I have got this one. C. If I write it in this way, in a matrix way, and then right side also another matrix equal to one matrix C1, C2. If I write it in this way, then comparing the rows, I shall get the previous equation. Okay. Now this matrix, this one, is known as coefficient matrix. And according to Kramer's rule, if we want to find the x1, x1 is equal to determinant of, okay, in the downwards, the, I mean in the denominator, there always remains a1, a1, 2, that is the determinant of the coefficient matrix remains here, okay. Determinant of the coefficient matrix remains here, and in the numerator, we change the coefficient matrix in such a way, see here, I am finding x1, and what are the elements that were there with x1, let me write the equation again. A11 and A2, 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 were there with X1. So to find out X1, we shall replace these two with C1 and C2. C1, C2, A12, A22. This is the way of calculating roots of equation using Kramer's rule. So according to Kramer's rule, we can see here, if this determinant is zero, then there will be infinitely many solutions okay there are so many solutions to look at here and what if this determinant is non-zero we shall get we shall get only one solution okay then in this equation assume this one as a matrix b b into x equal to zero tell me about one solution that will always exist if this C1 here is equal to 0 and this C2 is equal to, uh, equal to 0, if I put x1 and x2 as 0, then it will always be always satisfy this equation when the right hand side is 0, that is it is homogeneous, it will always satisfy. It means if this type of system, this is called homogeneous system where the right hand side doesn't contain any non-zero term, this system will always have single solution 
that is the trivial solution or 0 0 0 solution when this determinant will be equal to 0 I and mean, it will be not equal to 0 okay but see what's happening here for our this matrix now come to the main problem for our this matrix here now the equation x minus 30 i into let me take y y as variable this equation is being satisfied by a non-zero matrix A here, where A is this matrix. Okay, this is being satisfied for A. It means this system, this this system, this equation has more solution than the trivial solution, which implies what? This coefficient determinant is actually zero. It means the determinant of this one. I is equal to zero or in other words this matrix is non-singular or sorry singular and the question asked what question asked that it is non-singular but it is actually singular therefore that is false okay so I hope you guys have understood this you guys try to find more problems of this type try to solve them see one of my friend, he is not actually a student right now, he is also a mathematics student. He has done her MSc. Uh, sorry, actually it is she, not he. She has done her MSc with me only. Uh, she is a very good student. And she suggested me that uh, why should I am using that this much time to prove one problem. But what I said in the beginning that I try to apply or I mean I, I try to explain and apply the theory in the same position or in same problem that's why I'm taking each and every problem with this much care okay so guys try to understand each and every problem try to solve more problems with the concept that you have got from this think in, think yourself and tell me if this problem can be solved in some other way with far more less time okay and you guys think I think the video is going to be more than 35 minutes but you don't be scared uh, because this is not the time required for actual solving like if I solve it now nah, if I solve it I can solve it in two to three minutes and two to three minutes is enough for solving these type of questions okay you guys try to do your best obviously you will do your best okay and the books that I said Adi Sharma, SND, Adi Hunt, uh, MTG all these books are all of them are good Nowadays, not a single book is like a bad book or insufficient book. All book contain the necessary information. Okay. Now, the way of presentation is, uh, I mean, people like the way of presentation of a book in his own way. Okay. So, if there is any queries or any doubt, please ask me. I shall try to solve them. Do your best. All the best. Thank you. Check.